Hey guys, welcome back. So you are now aware as how to apply this Con2D layer on an input image. And you have also observed as how to specify the number of filters and how to specify the padding and how to specify the kernel size as well whenever we specify this Con2D layer. In this video, we are going to explore this in detail. When I say explore this in detail, we are going to understand as how the value changes, that is how the input value transforms to get the output value. Now here to begin with, I have defined my input shape as 1, 5, 5, 1. So 1 refers to number of images. In my case, I'm specifying my number of images as 1. 5, 5, 1 represents height into width into number of color channels. In my case, since the number of color channels is 1, I'll say this as a black and white image. And I'm creating a tensor with, with the shape of input shape, okay? So this X is a TF dot tensor object which contains the shape of 1, 5, 5, 1. And what I'm doing over here is I'm creating a L1 as a Con2D layer. And this Con2D layer contains number of filters as 1, kernel size as 3,3 3, and padding is equal to valid. So that means I am not specifying any padding over here. Okay. And I'm defining my input shape as input underscore shape of 1 colon blank. So that means I'm specifying the shape of individual image. After defining my L1 layer, that is my Con2D layer, I'm applying this Con2D layer on my input image X. And then I'm displaying the shape of my output Y. So I'm going to execute this cell. Okay, so as a result of performing this convolution operation, the resulting shape of Y is 1, 3, 3, 1. So that means we have lost a dimension on each side of the image. Now, as I said already, we know how this shape changes. The thing that we'll be exploring is how the value of this y changes. Now, when we say it as kernel size is 3, 3, so what it would so what it would essentially does is it would create a parameter matrix. So this parameter matrix will have the shape as 3, 3. So if I want to create a 3, 3, I'll create a box like this. You can imagine this to be 3, 3 kernel. So for this 3, 3 kernel, it would create the parameters with initialized values. So it will have the values ranging between W1, W2, W3 up to W9. So I'll be having nine parameters for this kernel. And along with defining nine parameters for this kernel, we will also have a single bias term. So each kernel would result in weight parameters as well as a single bias term. So if I try to get the initialized weights from this L1 layer, I'll write as L1 dot get underscore weights. And once I execute this, I'll get the resulting array like this. These are the initialized weights of this L1 layer guys. Along with this initialized values of weights, we also have a initialized value of bias term as well. The initialized value of bias term is zero. Now, when we specify it as kernel size as three comma three, this would result in initialized values of weights as nine. That is nine weights and single bias term. Now, whenever we are specifying this Con2D layer, we can also specify as we don't want to initialize the bias term itself. At that time, we can specify the parameter use underscore bias as false. So in this case, I am creating the same that is x with tf.random.normal with input shape that is 1, 5, 5, 5, 1. And I'm applying this x on my L1 layer. And on my L1 layer, I have specified my use underscore bias as false. So this time, if I print the shape of y, this time also I'll get the same shape that is 1, 3, 3, 1. But if I display my x, this x will have the shape as 1, 5, 5, 1. And if I display this L1 dot get underscore weights. So this time I can only see my initialized values of weights, guys. So that is the difference. Now, if I display my output y, so if I display my output y, my output y has the values as 0 0.5071, minus 0 0.399, 1.57 and so on. Now what we are going to do is we are going to test our theoretical understanding. We have understood that suppose if we have an input image like this, so I'll write it like this. I'm having an input image and this is having the dimension as 5 comma 5 comma 1. Okay, so this single input image is having the dimension as 5 comma 5 comma 1. Now, if I have a kernel of the size 3, 3, so to represent this kernel, I'll write it like 
I'll write it in the blue color. So I'm having a single uh, kernel and this single kernel is having the shape as 3 comma 3. Now what I'll be doing is I'll be placing my kernel on top of this input matrix which is nothing but input image and find the dot product between the images the pixel values of that region with the weight values. So I'm going to repeat over here what I'll be doing is I'll be placing my kernel on top of my image and find the dot product between the pixel values of the image on that region with the initialized values of this kernel. So that is what it means by performing the convolution operation. So to test this out what I have written over here is I have written as x underscore flat and from this I am extracting 3 by 3. Yes, I am extracting the dimensions of 3 by 3 from this input data x. Okay, and I am converting into a single long vector. And I am defining my w and w as tf dot shape l1 dot get underscore weights comma minus 1. So that means I am flattening out my entire w matrix. So this will have my initialized weights and what I'm doing over here is I'm finding the dot product between this input and the weights. Now as per our theoretical understanding, when it performs the dot product between input and weights, this should result in a single output, which is nothing but transformed output of that middle pixel. So I'm going to execute this cell. So we have the output that says 0 0.5071. And if you observe the output in Y, the first value over here, it says 0 0.5071.7896. So this confirms our theoretical understanding, guys. So with this, we come to the end of this video, guys. And in this video, we have learned as how the mathematical operation takes place whenever we perform this convolution operation.